I don't know, years ago, I wanted to get Robert's stuff out there and some things that we were seeing, and we started posting videos. And I think this was uh, circa August of 2017. That's where people have come from, right? So there's a need for all this stuff, right? So there's billions of people out there that can use this kind of information. I mean, think about it. Think outside the box. I have the feeling that it's almost impossible to no, construct it's the No, it's not. It's absolutely <laughs> not. I <agree. laughs> Every six weeks. Don't I? Yep. Every six weeks, I'll take one or two cases, and I totally change them. Yep. Totally change the vertical dimension and move them forward. And I do it all in a single day with CEREC technology. But it takes that right there for me to know where i got to put them first. A large percentage of deranged joints adapt is important and remain the same over passing time, 91%, okay, maintain the same joint status at a 15-year recall. So what does that mean? 91% of the time, they kind of adapt and fix themselves. And we, the dentist, if we're working the dentition, we get away with it. So the modification of that bone that you see, you don't see a lot of cortical, cortical bone on the top of that condyle, and it's flat. And so you're thinking it's bone against bone there. I'm thinking there's a thin layer of soft tissue, yeah. but that's kind of, in my, in my world, that's beautiful adaptation. Once you have laxity of your lateral ligaments, then you'll slip medially. Okay, I buy that. On the other side, on the side that you got hit, on the ipsilateral side, the mandible will move to the right. So now you stretch the medial ligaments, so the meniscus is gonna go lateral. So you can have what's called a contra crew injury. The side of injury, it goes to the same, both sides go, they displace the same direction, but depends on right or left. One goes lateral, one goes medial. Wayne, you just answered my question, the calcification and a, as a result of the functionality on the muscle, excess functionality on the muscle. So the it's got to be. Probably the other place we see it is these masseter hypertrophy cases. When you look at the angle of the mandible, the mandible also starts to bow outwards. So that's actually the muscle attachment, that you're actually getting calcification of the muscle attachment. So that's probably the most common place we'll see that, so. Cool. Cool, thank you. There's usually another reason for their pain. Every case is different. Some people will partially adapt, some people will fully adapt. Some people won't adapt at all. The ones that won't adapt at all for whatever reason, guess who's screwed? They're probably gonna be going under the knife. Is that fair? Yeah. A large amount of time, large, large forces and hypercalcification. That's what nature does. I'm happy. Yep. Points, how can you control the teeth? Well, let's slap a splint on there. I don't want them breaking my, my, my work or I don't want them wearing their teeth down. I'm their dentist. Well, what could you be doing indirectly to the damn joints? But the bite has nothing to do with the TMJ and the TMJ has nothing to do with the bite. And the NIH says you may not touch this, you know, blah, 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 all this bullshit. The reality is, it's connected, right? So how are you going to control? How you, well, the way I look at it, make them, make them understand what's wrong with them in a way that's reasonable. Uh, give them some options. Tell them the truth. Don't sell them anything. Tell them this is option one, two, three. You can even do nothing. Nature knows no boundaries. Remember that slide? Nature doesn't give an SHIT what our licensure is in. Our boards do but nature don't care. I come from a skewed population because that is my population. But the, and see normal is, is, is I don't see them, so. Uh, but, but with that in mind, you know, so there's probably never a bone brace, there's always some, or usually a soft tissue interface, but is that interface compressible or not? If you're on the meniscus, unlikely. If you're on the garden hose, the retrodiscal, the posterior ligament, it's compressible. So instead of slicing like this, you're slicing like this. Yeah, so if you slice like this and your meniscus is here, then you'll get like two slices and you'll have no idea where your meniscus is. But by doing this, you're putting the orientation of the eminence, the lateral pterygoid muscle, everything about it in the right orientation. I'm going in. There's a sagittal cut of that spot. Going in further. Going in further. You guys get it? Pay the money. Your patients are paying for it. Might as well, like, like Ed said, you gotta, it needs to be diagnostic. Why would you do it otherwise, right? And then you open up their CT scan. You start with condylar head surface area. 
They've already seen what osteochondral means. You pound that in, you talk about the 160 plus or minus 10%, and then you go to other parameters that we're gonna talk about here in a few minutes, okay? So that's how you make the patient own their problem. Check, 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 check. The other side is this big, 16.3 by 5.8. 16.3 isn't 21. 5.8 isn't 7.9. So why in the same patient did one side grow, grow more than the other? Why? Because if you're posturing too far, too long, too much, muscles don't like it. You get dystonia, you get claudication, hypoxia, right? All that bad stuff, pain, lactic burn, etc. The atus is back here, the brain's up here, the fossa there, the fossa eminence line. Remember, the disc always lies in there. Here, look, look at the difference. You're in the hole here. Here, you're slightly down the hole. There's the disc, still not recaptured. And over there, they probably can't even open all the way. There's the disc, it's still not recaptured. There is no stable position. That's not a stable joint. That's why stir images are so important for me is if I have inflamed tissue next to bone and you have a little break in that fiber cartilage on the top surface, now you have inflammation contacting bone, you get bone resorption.